From Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July 5th. You have to think about it. I did. It's a day after. A day after. It's a day after 4th of July. So hopefully everyone's back at work, probably a little groggy from the celebrations or uh, staying up to your neighbors popping fireworks. Yeah, I was going to say you either up late celebrating or you stayed up late listening to fireworks next door. So we're all in this together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Justin Horn. Yeah, well, listen, I'm going to bring you some good news. We've got some better rain chances today than we've seen in a little while. I, th I think we're going to get some showers and storms. Uh, well, they're already developing, but they should move further inland towards San Antonio by the afternoon. So there is a chance you could get a cooling shower a little bit later today. There's authority radar. You see some of the showers and storms down there between Corpus Christi and Bevo detecting a few lightning strikes at this hour, and this is working north and west. So uh, again, with a little deeper moisture moving in, I think our odds are just a little bit better today at seeing some rain. On top of that, we got a lot of cloud cover. Like yesterday, the clouds will stick around, so that'll keep temperatures in check. We're thinking mid-90s for highs today. Right now, we're sitting at 82 here in San Antonio, 83 Kennedy, some 70s still in the Hill Country, 79 in Comfort, 74 out in Las Maples. As far as rain chances go today, I'd say between 4 and 8 o'clock. That's kind of our time frame where we'll up those chances to 30%. There could be some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there, too, which I don't think anyone would complain about. And weather headlines. Deep moisture gives us those better odds at downpours today. What about severe weather? No, but as I said, we could see a few pockets of heavier rain. And what about the Saharan dust? We haven't talked about that in a while. Is there any headed our way? We'll investigate that coming up here in just a few minutes. Let's get over to Steven now and talk traffic. How's it looking right now? Well, we are seeing some good stuff out here, Justin. Let's get a look around town. There is State Highway 151 at Loop 410 West. You really aren't seeing a whole lot. US 90 at Medio Creek always seems to be a big uh, spot with congestion, but as we give you another look around town, things have been quiet, at least from what we're seeing on Transguide. Our map, whole other story here, and that's because we have a crash that's major crash. It's still being reported by TxDOT out towards the gain. This is along I-10 eastbound at State Highway 46. Notice there's a lot of yellow and red that builds out there. That is the congestion that is taking place, and it does look like all lanes are being impacted at this time. I've not seen any information posted from the Skin Police Department, but we are going to continue to watch this area very closely because it is going to impact a lot of people's drive time, especially if you're heading out towards Seguin. Traffic earlier was backed up about two miles. Now we've added another mile to that. You can see right behind me, so just pack some patience. Let's hope everyone's doing okay out there. We'll work to get that information for you. Well, let's get a, metro, a look at the metropolitan area while we have our map up and not seeing anything else just a little bit of that scattered construction and it does look like we have another crash was reported a little bit closer into 35 at us 90. We'll get a closer look at that but just as a quick reminder here in I-10 uh, along I-10 Kendall County rail repairs will begin around 9 this morning should wrap at 3 this afternoon. This is going to take us all the way to the end of the work week July 7th during that time we'll see the exit ramp 542 close so just keep that in mind and scan this QR code because it takes you directly to our case at traffic page been off the last few days moving but I wanted to make sure we can get you moving in the right direction. So scan that QR code takes you to our page. We have a full list of closures. So plan your commute ahead of time, guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police were busy overnight responding to shooting calls. One of those shootings involved two teenagers on our city's east side. SAPD says it happened just before 10 p.m. last night in an area around G Street. That's near Hampton and I-10. Two men in their late teens were taken to Bamsey with gunshot wounds. One was hit in the arm and is expected to be OK. However, the other team was hit in the back and neck and is in critical condition. A man is in the hospital this morning after he was shot in a parking lot. Police say that man was shot during a fight just before 1030 last night on Burnett Street near Dignity Park on the east side. He was taken to the hospital, is expected to be OK. Police have not found any suspects. This is an ongoing investigation. And now another shooting. This one overnight on the far north side left San Antonio police with a lot of questions. Happened in a retail area around 4 a.m. at Stone Oak Parkway in 1604, right there at the Loop 1604. Right now we don't have much information, but we do know a man was shot and taken to a hospital. It's unclear what happened, and it's our understanding so far no arrests have been made. Well, in your other morning headlines, a high-profile arrest in Mexico related to kidnapped American students. And a Grammy Award-winning artist making a plea on stage to her audience. Max Massey joins us live in our studio with this morning's other headlines. Good morning. Good morning, guys. So we're starting at the White House. Kind of a scary situation. A white powdery substance found at the White House Sunday night. 
Scary enough that they actually had to evacuate the area. Now, White House briefly evacuating Sunday evening. President Joe Biden not at the White House. He was at Camp David. Secret Service, though, discovering suspicious powder in a common area of the West Wing. Law enforcement officials say preliminary tests show the substance tested positive for cocaine. Now, Secret Service agents were doing routine rounds on Sunday. They found this white powder in an area accessible to tour groups. Not any particular West Wing office, though. Now, the complex was evacuated around 8.45 p.m. Sunday. Fire and emergency crews, they were brought in to do that rapid testing, which we told you preliminarily identified it as cocaine. Now, the White House soon reopened the powder sent to labs for further testing. Now to this violent weekend that we've really been talking about for the last five days. Now we report on the various shootings, Philadelphia, Baltimore, even Fort Worth. New research though showing that the 4th of July holiday, they've seen the most mass shootings, more mass shootings than any other day on the calendar, not only this year, but over the last few years. According to CNN's analysis of data from the gun violence archives since 2014, Independence Day holiday said the most mass shootings compared to the rest of the year. Both CNN and the GVA, gun violence, they consider a mass shooting any incident with four or more people injured or killed, not including the shooter. Clearly, this is a problem our society has been dealing with for at least the last nine years. Celebrations, parades, and block parties ending in gunfire. This is insanity. This cannot, cannot be the society that we are expected to live in. I think, frankly, people are, are tired of the, the, the finger pointing in the politics when nothing happens and nothing gets done except we just can you continue going from tragedy to tragedy. And the data shows that gun violence has been on the rise during especially the summer months. The findings say the top 10 days with the most mass shootings since 2014, all but New Year's Day, all of them, the remaining nine took place in either June, July or August. All right, now to Mexico, where Mexican authorities have another suspect in custody connected to the deadly kidnapping of four Americans in Matamoros, Mexico, earlier this year. So that makes a total of seven people now arrested in the case. Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams survived the kidnapping. Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown, they were killed during the situation. The tight-knit group actually traveling from South Carolina to Matamoros for Washington McGee to undergo a medical procedure, but they were actually attacked by gunmen. They fired into the van, loaded them in the back of the truck, and then kidnapped them. Now, the victims shuttled to multiple locations before being found in a house around Matamoros. Well, back here at home, big question. Why can't people just act appropriately? For some people, that means not throwing things during concerts. And really, that was Adele's big message during her latest concert. So at the recent Weekends with Adele show, the singer addressed the recent string of incidents where fans have actually been throwing objects on stage, including hitting some of the artists. Kelsey Ballerini hit in the eye after someone threw a bracelet on stage. BB Rexa hit in the head with a thrown cell phone. And according to the clip posted on social media, Adele asking her audience if they've noticed people that are forgetting to show etiquette. Well, she then dared them to throw something at her while using some very colorful language. We're going to keep it PG here on GMSA at 9 a.m. She was actually holding a T-shirt launcher at the time she issued the warming, and she proceeded to shoot one into the crowd. As far as the incident involving BB Rexa, a man reportedly arrested, then charged with felony assault for using his cell phone as a weapon, clearly a warning to concert goers to simply behave. All right, we're going to end the headlines with a happy story, reunification. A beloved canine that went missing from his home in Fresno, California, back with his handler after a good Samaritan spotted him, turned it into the, the police, and, you know, she was just, look at him, he's so cute, he's just making new friends. So Odin, this is Odin, I mean, come on, you gotta smile. He is a Madera County Sheriff's Office dog, trained to search and track. He had to be searched out himself over the weekend. Urgent posts on social media asking people to be on the lookout for him after he escaped his kennel and escaped the backyard of his handler's home in Fresno. And the sheriff's office said there were confirmed sightings of Odin in the area, but it wasn't until about 9.30 Sunday night where he was located. Turns out Odin had been keeping himself busy in the backyard of someone's home about five miles away. So Cameron Escoto, she lives in a home near the area about five miles away. She'd been out of town, asked for a few days, asked her dad to stop by, check on her dog Sunday morning. Oh, you got a friend? Who's that? Who's that? And I was like, what's this Mal doing in my yard? It was like pure 
like relief tears were flowing like they were just hugging me they were just so so grateful that they had him back odin has been returned home he was just making friends the sheriff's deputy association offering a two thousand dollar reward for odin's safe return the office making arrangements to present the reward to cameron later this week so guys scary situation but a happy ending odin is back home he was just out there making friends just like we all do just needed a little bit of social, yeah. social time. Smile on my face. Can't help okay. it. Okay. It helps if you have a great collar, too, Max. <laughs> Thank you very much. 908, 81 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Preventing summer learning loss, or also known as the summer slide. Still ahead, Patty Santos talks to teachers and experts about what to do if your child is experiencing learning loss. Maybe hot outside, but the San Antonio Zoo has one more way to keep you cool while you visit. When we come back, Sarah Spivey's going to tell us the cool, cool ways the zoo is keeping guests comfortable during the summer heat. Science with Sarah is partnering with the San Antonio Zoo. And y'all know it's hot this summer, but the San Antonio Zoo has so many ways to stay cool. Here with me is Kyle Perez. He is the director of public relations at the zoo. Tell us a little bit about the riverbank. Sure, so riverbank is one of the many ways that you can cool off here at San Antonio Zoo. You can swim around, splash around, and then clean up afterwards. But we also have misters throughout the zoo. The great thing about this summer is if you pay for a day, you get all year free. So whether you're here for an hour, two hours, you can then come back and enjoy Zoo Boo, Zoo Lights. We have so many activations that this day will make your whole year. That is so wonderful, Kyle. And I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but this is so cool. It feels amazing outside. Even got a foot washing station so you can get done with here and go around and see some of the animals. How do you guys keep the animals cool? Sure, so animals have the freedom to go inside or outside as they please, but a lot of our animals are from Africa. So they're used to the heat. You can come and see a giraffe. You can come see a rhino, a hippo. And really that interaction is gonna last you a lifetime. Come make memories here at San Antonio Zoo because it is a beautiful time no matter what time of year. Again, you can pay for a day and you're good for the whole year. That is a wonderful deal. All right, for more on San Antonio Zoo and Science with Sarah, you can go to ksat.com. In about a month and a half, students will go will be going back to the classroom. But if you're not careful, the summer break could cause a learning gap for them. Patty Santos tells us just 30 minutes a day is all you might need to prevent the summer slide. Pieces do we have? Ready? Count for me. One, two, three. 15 to 30 minutes a day of enrichment activities can go a long way to prevent summer learning loss known as the summer slide. We can see as much as a whole semester of learning loss over the summer when we don't keep it going. Educators at Brighton Preschool gave us some ideas on easy activities. Just tailor it to your child's age and interests. Have them do um, cooking activities with you. That's all math, measuring and counting and timing. Reading, a walk at the park could become a science lesson. Cooking turns into a life skill lesson. Just be engaged. That means phones down and making eye contact. Remember that it's quality of time that you want to work on, not quantity. Student in Marissa Buentaya's class are learning using simple things most families have at home leaves, water, and Legos. As long as we keep on feeding their minds, then everything's going to be great with them. Keeping older kids motivated is a little tougher. Suggestions provide them with age-appropriate reading on subjects in which they are interested and maybe try something this teacher mom did with her own kid. Give them money and a task. So we gave her her own budget. She had to budget, do some good math, and she had to make sure that she had all of her school clothes ready to go. Patty Santos, Case Sat 12 News. Already 82 degrees, or maybe down to 82 and already rebounding back up. Yes, uh, and temperatures will rise a little bit here next couple of hours. But my hope is that we'll get some rain in here. Maybe that will cool things Please. down. Please. Fingers crossed. I think we all could use a little bit of rain. Our lawn certainly could. Uh, well, let me show you the rainfall where we stand for the year. We're at 0.91 uh, since June 1st, so we're a little bit below average there. For the year, we're at 12.75, and that's about, uh, well, close to four inches below average now. We're doing better than last year, but it's still uh, been relatively dry, especially over the last month or so. Let me show you the rainfall over the last six years, just to give you an idea of where we stand, some perspective here. It's been a dry stretch since 2019. It was just 2021 where we were above average. Otherwise, it has been below average. And last year was just rotten when it comes to uh, the lack of rainfall, 11.51. 
We are a little bit above that mark so far this year, and obviously we've got a long ways to go. So hopefully we can uh, get some better numbers in here. But this dry stretch has not been great for us. So uh, some rain. Yeah, that would be really nice today. We're noticing some along the coast this morning. Some lightning strikes down there on Beeville and Victoria. A little batch of rain trying to work north and west. Now, does this hold together to San Antonio? Probably not. But as we get into the afternoon, I think we'll see some more development. And uh, we have the potential even here in town to get some rain. Let me zoom in on some of these showers. And uh, right around Goliad, starting to see some of this rain move in. You're getting a good downpour right now. Probably hearing a few rumbles of thunder, too. And then as we move north Yorktown, you've got some showers around you, but nothing moving through at the moment. Same with Quero. A little shower passing across Highway 87 there. And then it becomes far more spotty as you move north. But we are noticing a couple of very light showers around Floresville and Poth this morning. And as I said, nothing here around San Antonio, at least at the moment. Hopefully that changes later today. Uh, here's why. Uh, we have some deeper moisture that's going to be coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. So these darker greens you see here, this is some, uh, really some tropical moisture that's trying to work in. And that deeper moisture should give us a little bit more lift. And maybe we get sea breeze going a little bit later this afternoon. And that should enhance the coverage of rainfall. Not only today, but I think again tomorrow before things dry out and our rainfall chances go away. So here's one of our computer models and it does show that by two o'clock got some showers and storms building to the south and east and then that tries to work a little bit closer to San Antonio by 4 p.m. Keep in mind the evening commute could be a little bit wet in spots. Uh, we could see some lightning and thunder with some of these heavier downpours. Now these won't last very long. We're not looking for flooding or anything like that, but there could be some pockets of heavier rain. By tomorrow morning, we start off with clouds again and we we do it all over again. Noontime, showers and storms build and then they work towards San Antonio by the afternoon and the evening hours. After that, our rain chances do go away. So our kids had 12 hour forecast 91 at one o'clock, 96 at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. We put in that 30 percent chance for some showers and storms and that continues through about eight o'clock before the rain chances fall off some. Uh, as far as the heat index goes, it's still going to be steamy out there. I think the heat index still gets up close to 100 here in San Antonio. That feels like number, even with high temperatures only in the mid 90s. When you factor in the humidity, which will be a little bit higher today, uh, the heat index will still make it feel uh, rather steamy outside. 82 right now, the heat index is already up to 87 and you see the cloud cover. Uh, we've got quite a bit of that. Like yesterday, we'll have some off and on clouds, and that helps with temperatures too. 79 in Kerrville, 82 in New Braunfels, 83 right now in Gonzales, 84 in Kennedy, and those dew points are in the 70s, so they're uh, rather high. Uh, extended forecast, 94 tomorrow, still with a 30% chance of some downpours. 97 Friday, and then we build those temperatures to the triple digits by Sunday, and we could go as high as 102 by Monday and Tuesday. Ooh. Hoping for that rain. Yes, I, uh, this is probably the best chance we have for a uh, week, week and a half maybe. So let's hope everyone gets some rain. Thank you, yeah. Justin. Right now, 919, 82 degrees. A bump in the road in Hollywood for the latest Barbie movie. Why it's already being banned in some places. That's next in today's Hollywood Minute. Barbie's world travels have hit a snag. Vietnam has banned commercial screenings of the film. The issue, a shot of a map with a version of China's nine dash line, which represents China's territorial claims in the long contested South China Sea. Vietnam and other countries dispute those claims. It's something that you just know. Jodie Turner-Smith is getting her game on. The actress has joined the cast of Tron Ares, the third film in the Tron franchise. Oscar winner Jared Leto and past live star Greta Lee, also star, production is set to begin in August. You're going to have a really hard time. Russell Crowe wants people to stop asking him about Gladiator 2. At a film festival in the Czech Republic, Crowe noted he knows nothing about the cast or the plot of Ridley Scott's planned sequel. That's because Spoiler alert, Crow's character died in the 2000 original, and he's not in the new movie. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Many companies are pushing for workers to spend more time back in the office. The Labor Department says the average amount of time spent working from home every day last year was down just 12 minutes 
from the year before. More than 8% of job postings on Indeed advertise some sort of work from home option. That's three times more than 2019. Baby boomers seem to like where they live, according to a new report. Turns out 38% of those 65 and older have lived in their homes for at least 30 years or more. And with boomers staying put instead of downsizing, it may be keeping homes off the market for new buyers. If you're paying a thousand bucks a month or more for your car, you're not alone. Experts say nearly one in five people are managing a monthly car payment topping a thousand dollars. It's a lot. The average car payment now sits at $733, the highest on record. High car prices and rising interest rates combining to boost those prices. The IRS warning taxpayers to be on alert for a new tax refund scam. Even though we're kind of mid-year, the scam involves mail coming in a cardboard envelope from a delivery service. And the letter inside includes the IRS masthead, if you will. The wording on the letter says, in quote, in relation to your unclaimed refund, and includes contact info, a phone number that does not belong to the IRS. It also asks for personal information, but the agency says it contains red flags that mark it as a scam, including strange wording, odd punctuation, a mixture of fonts, and inaccurate info on tax return deadlines. Mm. Mm. I just can't get over people paying over $1,000 a month for their car. It happens. 925, oh. 82 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. 82 degrees and the clouds are there. So that's a good sign as we hope and fing uh, cross our fingers for rain. Justin Horn will have our forecast. Dry roads right now taking a live look at 410 Marbach. Still showing a major accident. I-10 East at 46 over in Seguin on the way to Houston between San Antonio and Houston. We'll be back. 4th of July holiday brought heat and tubers all along the Kumau River. Unfortunately, these hot, dry conditions caused the river to look a little different this year. John Paul Barajas explains why that could be good for local business. I have four tokens for you. Y'all are going to turn these in around the corner for your tubes. I also have four wristbands. All four of y'all will need to wear one. Have y'all floated with us before? There you go. It's no secret. Come summertime in South Texas, you have to find ways to beat the heat. And for many, river tubing is a go-to pastime. It's my first time, and I'm really excited. It's fun. So you've been on the river before? Yeah, too many times. <laughs> but this summer, water levels could affect your ride along the river. For the Kamal, stream flow is at 113 cubic feet per second, which is about three times slower than it normally is. The float here on the Kamal is about two miles long, and typically when water levels are higher, it takes about an hour and 45 minutes to complete the float. But with water levels dropping, the time is significantly slowed to three and a half hours. But the owner of Texas Tube says that's not necessarily a bad thing for those enjoying the water. We're, we're at a point to where you can still float all the way through. That's what's important. People don't like to get up and walk. So about a three hour float, people have enough, they're ready to go get some AC, get some food in town, and uh, hit the sack pretty early. Coley Reno owns Texas Tubes. He says even with the drop in water levels, business is good. And most people we spoke to are okay with a longer float. Can you tell the difference of how slow it is? Or? Definitely. I think I enjoy it because it's just longer in the, in the water and then you don't have to go through the shuttle if you want to come back. But some with small kids say they'll think twice. Yeah, that is a little bit concerning that it is going to take a little bit longer. But that's just us because we have a huge family, kids and all that, so we don't want to take too long on the river. Slowed float or not, the Kamal was packed and full of fun. <laughs> John Paul Barajas. <laughs> hey, Seth, 12 News. John Paul may have been the smartest guy in the newsroom yesterday doing that story. Staying cool. Yep. Good job. Somebody's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. Looks like they had fun up there. Yeah, it looked nice, didn't it? It's a good way to stay cool this time of year. And a lot of it's those It's still rivers, flowing, at least. It's still flowing. The Kamal looks good. The Guadalupe, there's some spots where the flow is uh, really slowed down. Uh, some some rain would help. Uh, it, would, it would go a long way. And so I think that we are going to get some activity today. It's still going to be hit or miss. Isolated activity. We're calling for a 30% chance here in San Antonio. Uh, but the chance is there, and this is probably our best opportunity for a while today and tomorrow. There you see the showers and storms right now. We've got some activity down near Goliad. That's kind of the heaviest of the rain that we're seeing right now on the radar. Uh, with some lightning strikes here, you're getting a good a, a good downpour right now if you're watching us from Goliad. And then Yorktown, you may get a little uh, shower activity here within the next 30 minutes or so. And then as we track north, some showers trying to make their way up towards Gonzales. Now, nothing here in San Antonio right now. 
But again, I think our rain chances come up as we get into the say the four or five, six o'clock hour. Uh, and that uh, could make for a wet commute, at least in spots. So just heads up there. Uh, KSA 12 hour forecast 91 at one o'clock, 93, 2 p.m. There are those 30% chances of rain with cloud cover today and a chance for rain that will keep temperatures down uh, in the mid 90s. Uh, better than it has been and uh, we'll see uh, some slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow too with more rain chances on the way. We'll detail that forecast for you and look ahead to the weekend too here in just a couple minutes guys. Thank you Justin taking a look outside of the road 1604 and Kitty Hawk everything looks like it is flowing smoothly there really not seeing any incidents at this time if anything pops up we'll let you know about it. San Antonio police say a driver is behind bars accused of drunk driving after crashing into a house just west of downtown. So take a look at your screen. It happened just before 1130 last night on Northwest 26th Street. Police say a man in his 30s lost control of his truck, rolled into the corner of the house, breaking the gas line. A CPS crew arrived quickly and shut off that gas. The driver ran away but was caught in an HEB parking lot around the corner. He's facing charges of DWI and leaving the scene of an accident. Bear County firefighters say a trash can fire caused about half a million dollars worth of damage and left two families looking for new homes. The fire happened around one this morning in the neighborhood outside 1604 near West Military. Firefighters say the trash can was inside the garage of one home. The fire then spread in the attic and then next door. Thankfully, everyone managed to make it out safely. Big news for local students, teachers, and the success coaches who support them. Congressman Joaquin Castro and Greg Kazar announced their offices have secured more than $2.8 million in AmeriCorps funding that will go to local nonprofit city year. Cordy Friedman explains how that organization helps students in eight local districts find academic success. In eight public San Antonio schools, these red uniforms are well known. I wear this jacket with pride. Jasmine Glasper says the jackets belong to student success coaches placed in schools by the nonprofit City Year, focusing on closing gaps in education. The success coaches are all members of AmeriCorps, a federal service agency placing over 200,000 members with nonprofits across the country. Our core members go through about three weeks of training before school starts, where we really dig into like, like what does it mean to work with students. Glasper is a former success coach and now manages City Year San Antonio's programming. Working with the kids on tutoring, uh, I was the ELA coordinator so I was focused on English so I would do English tutoring in the classroom, outside the classroom. Uh, we would also do social emotional learning. 24 year old Sofia Farias completed her 10 months as a success coach last year, providing mentoring to improve literacy, math and socio emotional skills for at risk youth. I kind of was an at risk kid in some aspects, like as far as dealing with mental health and being in a system that doesn't necessarily um, always understand what that means. She says she's able to pick up on things others can't. I'm like, Oh, they're acting a little different like today, so I'm, we need to talk. Attendance as well, like help making sure like, okay, like why aren't you on time? Like what's going on? How can I support you? Farias is grateful for the new wave of federal funding that will support 58 student coaches this coming school year and all the resources they need to succeed. And it allows us to function. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without it. They hope continued funding will allow students in even more San Antonio schools to see those trusted red jackets and know they have support. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. From the possibility of flying cars to the latest supermoon sightings, we have a lot of stories trending right now on KSAT.com. Max Massey is back to break down the details of just a few. So, Max, we know you were tracking the hot dog eating contest yesterday. Mm -hmm. What was the final result and what was your final <sighs> result? I know you went home and, and tried. I love 4th of July. 4th yeah. of July is like one of my favorite. It's like Thanksgiving number one, 4th mm. of July number two. Makes sense. You're a Philadelphia kid. Don't yeah. You? So. Thank you. Well, Thanksgiving family. Yeah. Number two to your heart, food. Food. And I wasn't going to say it, but thank you. Uh, I'll but say no, it for you. Yesterday, never a doubt who was going to win. In fact, we looked up the odds, minus 3,000 for Joey Chestnut to win. So to put that in perspective, if you would bet $3,000, you'd only win 100. A lot of risk, not much reward. And of course, he did win. The big question, though, would it even take place? So thunder and lightning causing a weather delay for a few hours in New York. There was even talk of canceling the men's event. On the women's side, 
That event was done. The defending champ, Mikasudo, she won again, claiming her ninth mustard belt. Yes, it's called the mustard belt if you win. Sarah, you got some competition. She ate 39 and a half mm. hot dogs and buns. The storm passed, and then Joey Jaws Chestnut, the defending men's champ, well, he threw back 62. Oh. It's nothing because his record is 76, only oh. fitting because 1776. He beat 15 other guys, claiming his eighth straight mustard belt, 16th overall in the last 17 years. And guys, the closest to him, 849. I'm still sticking with mine. I think I can knock down 23. Regardless, from one seemingly fictional feat to another, do you guys remember Back to the Future 2? Yay, nay, I know there's some mixed reviews. Of okay. Yeah. Well, one of the big scenes of flying cars. Well, that becomes a reality sooner than we might think. The long awaited dream of the future, it's a step closer thanks to the FAA. The Federal Aviation Administration certified the products for testing at least one specific vehicle. A California startup calls a flying car. It's for the first fully electric vehicle, so hey, no gas needed. And it got US governmental approval that. It can both fly and travel on the roads. One of the manufacturers says their Model A vehicle aircraft, it's the first flying vehicle that's drivable on our public roads and can park like a normal car. It also has vertical takeoff, which is really why we're talking about it, and landing capabilities. It'll be able to carry one or two occupants. The range will be 200 miles on the road, 110 miles in the air. I haven't looked up the exact mileage from here to Austin, but this is much better than I-35 already. Mm -hmm. The company expects to sell each vehicle. This is where it gets a little pricey, so, you know, wait for it. $300,000 per. The first pro projected delivery, the end of 2025. So, just Is wait. it see-through? No, that, that's just a rendering. Oh. This is, not the one, <laughs> this is not the Wonder Woman mobile, all right? It's, it's happening. <laughs> It can fly, but you will see it, I promise. Okay. okay. That's a whole other FAA thing that they would have to deal with because, you know, planes would have to see flying objects. Oh. All right, now to the latest on the emerald ash borer. It is back. It is an invasive pest that populates ash trees. Here's a big problem. It's back and it's killing millions of trees across 35 states, and it's been discovered again here in Texas. Texas A&M Forest Service trees. Well, they tell us that the adult beetles found in Cook County, north of Denton, Every year, Texas A&M Forest Services, well, they set traps, they set monitors for the pest. If you're being impacted or you're scared how to deal with all this, just check out caseout.com. I was giving Justin some grief on this one yesterday. Fireworks, they had a lot of people looking up last night for Independence Day, but a lot of people throughout the week, they have been looking up for the supermoon. Four possible planets you could also see. It was a real show through the week, and this is July's fully or full buck moon, and it was out there, it was shining even through some of the clouds. The super moon means that the moon appears slightly larger than normal because it's at or near perigee. Am I saying that right, Justin? Perigee. Perigee, I was close. Yeah. All right, meaning it is at the point where it's in orbit that's closest to Earth. July's super moon, the first of four super moons through the summer, and July's is named buck moon after the fact that bucks get their new antlers around this time of year. It's the first super moon of the year, and a lot of loyal viewers out there hit up case at connect they shared some great pictures and i mean I'm, I'm trying to look right there that's a little spooky we looked at some of them yesterday justin i mean this was you know, one of the things we were talking about because we've seen cloud coverage we've had some fog and it was a lot of skepticism if we'd even see it and then you talk about all the uh the fourth of july celebrations last night but take a look on top of the spookiness it really is an awesome sighting that one right there the lights even out a little bit. You can still see it. Guys, did you look up through the last week? Oh, that's beautiful. Big orange one right there. I made it I missed it personally. But clouds were an issue too, I think, when this alliance yes. was happening. Clouds and I don't know. I feel like people, I try to stay indoors when the moon gets that big. I try to stay indoors when there's fireworks going on, to be honest. I know you try to stay indoors at all times. Yeah. No, I've been good <laughs> about getting a reason. I'm trying to sunscreen every day. Sure. Sun. Okay. Want for a walk. It was a, I ate a lot yesterday, so I, I had to walk it off. And how many hot dogs did you knock off yesterday? I didn't eat. Uh, so I had two brats here. Okay. Shouts to the, I got to stay after 2 o'clock more often because I you get walk fed. into the newsroom. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch <laughs> of stuff left in there. The yes. evening crew, they feed people. I don't know what's going on. We got to step I it know. up here. I know. Morning's missing out. Uh, two hot dogs. Two brats. Two brats. Um, pound and a half of burger, and then some leftover steak. This yeah. guy with a side of steak. <laughs> side of steak. Side steak. Move over, Joey Chess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thanks, guys. As we head to break, here's a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around the city. If you have teens at home that are dying to get out of the house, you can take them over to the Tobin Branch Library for teen time. 
It's a chance for kids 13 to 18 to just hang out, play games, or watch movies with other kids their age. That'll be from 1 to 3 p.m. And then over at McCreelis Library, 3 p.m., they'll be showing the new Spider-Man No Way Home. You can beat the heat, watch a good movie, or look at all the events scheduled today at different public libraries around San Antonio. Just head to the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. Time for a look at Zoo Cam out at the San Antonio Zoo, and we're taking a look at the flamingos just kind of hanging out there. It's always a great day to go to the zoo. I've been working overtime trying to find some flamingo trivia as of late, and today it is all on Sarah Acosta. Hit me. Okay, why do flamingos stand on one leg? That was Justin's question during the commercial, commercial break. There's mm -hmm. a couple of reasons to okay. conserve heat. Okay. That might otherwise be lost while standing in cold water. That water's probably not too cold, probably why we're not seeing a lot of flamingos standing on one leg in that <laughs> shot. But also it reduces muscle fatigue, enables them to move more quickly if they suddenly have to escape a predator, probably also why they're not standing on one leg in this shot as well. Right. No threats there, or helps them maintain their balance and keeps them from falling over. I guess By standing on one leg? Yeah, because I <laughs> mean, look, confusing. they have such a long, Neck, think about it. Okay. Like, what? I think they're probably more stable on one leg. Like, it's like a, a <laughs> what is it? Not a tripod, a uh, monopod? They're like monopods. Bi, bipod, biped, bi, we're overthinking this just a little bit. <laughs> uh, the flamingos are like, hey man, we're just flamingos, okay? Yeah. We're just hanging out here at the zoo. You guys are burning up Google trying they're, to. They're just trying to eat some breakfast. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're like, how would you like a breakfast cam on you, <laughs> Justin it's true. <laughs> We're just watching the flamingos. Uh, it was cloudy in that shot. I'm sure they're enjoying that, enjoying some shade, some natural shade. Let me show you the radar. Uh, will we get some rain today? Uh, there is the chance for that. We're, we're noticing some showers and storms down there along the coast uh, near Goliad. And starting to see a few showers work up towards uh, Gonzales. Nothing here in San Antonio right now, I'll point out. Uh, nothing yet. I do think, again, that we should see some activity a little bit later this afternoon. There's like some of that heavier rain moving through Goliad. This will work north towards Yorktown and Cuero. You guys are next in line to get some of this rain. It's some much needed rain. Uh, really across our area we could use uh, just good soaking. And as we look north, some showers moving a little bit closer to Gonzales. Not in there yet, but I, I think that uh, we'll see these move in around uh, next 10 to 15 minutes or so. And uh, at the moment, just mostly cloudy here in San Antonio. Uh, so here's the reason why we're getting some better rain chances today. Some deeper moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. So we've got some tropical moisture trying to move in. And this will be around today and tomorrow. And there's just a lot of moisture in the atmosphere for anything to, uh, that develops to work with. So I think we could see some pockets of heavier rain uh, mixed in there too. It's not going to be terribly widespread. We're still talking isolated stuff here, and I, not everyone's going to get rain, but at least this is better odds than we've had in a while. This is around 4 o'clock today. It does show some of this activity moving a little bit closer to San Antonio, and then by 8, 9 o'clock, this is dying down. Tomorrow, we do it all again because it's uh, basically the same setup, and we'll get some of this moisture working here from the Gulf of Mexico and then uh, arriving by the afternoon here around San Antonio. Then after tomorrow, rain chances just go away. High pressure begins to build in again, and here comes the heat. Uh, so today and tomorrow, kind of our best chance to uh, get some much-needed rain. 91 at 1 o'clock, 96 at 4 and 5 o'clock, we have in that 30% chance there. And that goes through about 8 p.m. before we start to bring those rain chances down this evening, 89 at 9 o'clock. Uh, the look outside right now, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 73. We'll be a bit more humid today, so the heat index is a concern. 87 is what it feels like right now, but I think the heat index could get up near uh, 100 a little bit later this afternoon. And as we look at the cloud cover, still a lot of that, too. And with the moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, we should see, I think, quite a bit of cloud cover uh, throughout the day. And the more clouds we see, the better off we are with temperatures, as we've noticed the last several days. So uh, today, probably mid-90s for highs. Right now, we're at 82, 80 in Kerrville, 83, Hondo, 84 in Katua, and low 80s around the area right now. Very quickly, I want to mention Sahara and dust. We haven't talked about that uh, so much this year. Uh, we just haven't had a lot of plumes of dust moving in. Last year was really busy. This year we have not seen as many. Uh, there is a plume working across the Caribbean and it tries to get a little bit closer to our area this weekend, but really we don't see much of concentration of dust moving in. So we're good here 
Uh, let's hope it stays that way because you, uh, as you know, this can sometimes mess with our air quality. Uh, but so far, so good there. Uh, temperatures 94 tomorrow, 97 on Friday, and then back near triple digits this weekend. And it does get hot going into next week, but we'll keep an eye on the radar today and keep that case at weather app handy so you don't get stuck in a downpour this afternoon. I don't think I'd even mind if I got stuck in a downpour. I'd be okay with it. Like, yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Until 83 degrees. As if the heat wasn't enough to keep us sweating, but now it's messing with our phones. Next, what to do when your phone needs to cool down. Okay, it's not your imagination. Your phone as it's like warm. My phone's warm. It's been running slowly. Your battery's draining quickly. It could be the heat. Yeah, hot temperatures are not your phone's best friend. 12 on your side's Marilyn Warts on what to do when the cell phone gets overheated. That summer sun, it can wear you out. And it's not just you, it's your phone too. You can cause major performance issues, reduce speeds. Uh, your phone could even uh, unexpectedly shut down and in some cases may not turn back on. Kelly Yarger with Batteries Plus says too much heat can permanently damage your phone's battery. Ever seen this on your iPhone? Apple's warning, your phone's too hot. The ideal operation temperatures for these phones is roughly around 32 to 95 degrees. 95? Lately, that's a cool front. So what can you do to protect your phone? Well, the first thing's pretty obvious, keep it out of direct sunlight. But Yarger says you don't wanna do this either. Leave it in the car. It gets ridiculously hot in there. Even putting it in your pocket on a very hot day is a bad idea. Instead, he says, use something like a backpack. Another no-no, stacking devices. It generates heat. If your phone gets hot to the touch, close your apps, lower the brightness, put it in airplane mode, and remove the case for a bit. It traps heat. Or the easiest thing, just turn it off. What you do not want to do with a hot phone is put it on charge or put it in the fridge. Yeah, it's a thing. Condensation can damage it. Bottom line. You're using your phone excessively and it's hot and you feel your phone's warm. I'd get off your phone for a while. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, our phones could use a break from the heat then. So we'll see what we can do today with some downpours, maybe bring those temperatures down some. We are in the low 80s right now, but 96 this afternoon, a 30% chance of rain. We'll see that again tomorrow. So some good moisture. It'll be uh, rather humid, uh, but just you know, maybe have the umbrella on standby with the potential for some showers and a few storms today. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But still probably have to water the plants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be uh, any sort of drop-busting rain. Thank you, Justin. You got it. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day.